Working from home has plenty of pluses and some minuses too. With Califasane, we take stock. Okay, so guys, just to make sure that I got this. Nearly a year into the pandemic. So the iPhone is going to record video and audio. Many of us have gotten used to online meetings. And you'll also get a special fee for uh, your cinematography. <laughs> but it's still not easy. You feel so unqualified to do so many things during this period. It's crazy. Okay. Jeff, you're all set. I think I have. Rafael Asadin and Jeffrey Polzer know all about the difficulties of working from home. It all started, I think, from a very personal uh, recognition that something was happening to the way in which we were interacting. Both are professors at Harvard Business School. I'm an organizational economist. With different specialties. I'm a professor in organizational behavior. They began studying randomized data from the emails and online meetings of more than 3 million people in 16 cities around the world. Were you on the team of people who loved working from home, or were you on the team of people who couldn't wait to get back to the office? <laughs> I think I was on the desperate team, on the team of trying to organize classes for my kids. Uh, so I was definitely, you know, not uh, enjoying my dirty martini on the couch at that point. <laughs> Their research confirms what many employees have already discovered, that where we work affects how we work. Yes, the shift to working from home really did make workdays longer, nearly an hour longer on average. Email traffic especially increased after hours. The boundary between work and personal life has really, in many cases, become obliterated. You know, so maybe you're sending some personal emails at night, but they're mixed in with your work emails. And by the way, you're working, you know, from your bedroom and your office and your kitchen. With most workers at home, the average number of meetings increased too. But they got shorter, even if they felt longer. You do have more meetings, and the time in between meetings, may you may not have enough time to recover. And there are other interruptions. Did you have kids wandering into your Zoom room while you were trying to teach? Oh, all the time. Some home environments are chaotic. I was on the call with, with the Italian prime minister at some point. One of my kids came in. So, you know, it's... Uh, <laughs> I think the struggle is real for people who have multiple uh, obligations. Yeah, my story was a little bit different where it's the two of us and our home is out in the country. Other homes are more like an oasis. And we work from home a lot anyway. And so the transition to ho working at home was fairly smooth and also pleasant in a lot of ways. Studies show working from home can be more productive. Companies can save on overhead, too. So will employees ever return to their offices? Matt Cooper says no. Everybody got more productive. You strip three hours of commute time out of your day. David Acheria says yes. We've made it clear that the expectation is that they will return back to the office that they're working out of. They're both tech CEOs in New York, but they have come to different conclusions about working from home. It's like this big social experiment. Yeah. It has been an absolutely insane year. And, you know, people just keep putting one foot in front of the other and working through it. Cooper runs Skillshare, a 10-year-old company that hosts online classes. Were there particular skills that people seemed to want to learn while they were locked down at home? Classes and topics that had sort of a self-help, stress relief, anxiety relief. That anxiety was good news for Skillshare. With employees working from home, the company flourished. As people were trying to find fun, constructive, uh, self-improvement directed activities to do with all this new free time, our numbers exploded. And he says most of his staff didn't want to return to the office full time. What they wanted was to go back, call it one to three days a week. And yeah, that's great, but when you're paying New York real estate and our next office was gonna be $100,000, $120,000 a month. Um, it's pretty expensive for one to three days a week. So he decided to do something radical. He shut down the physical office permanently. We reallocated a lot of the money that would have gone towards office, rent, utilities, to uh, an ongoing work from home stipend. Make sure you've got good internet, make sure you've got the desk set up you need, a good chair, all of those things. In the years before the pandemic, Yahoo and IBM both made headlines by scrapping work-from-home programs, asking many remote employees to come back.
And in September, Reed Hastings of Netflix called working from home a pure negative. All these companies that said, oh, we could never do it, people would never get anything done, well, they've managed to do it. So I think we've hopefully debunked that myth. And we hire people who are accountable, ambitious, aggressive, want to get things done. I don't have to be on top of them. When did you start having that feeling that, okay, we're working from home for now, but we need to get some people back in the office as soon as possible? And there was a growing cohort of employees who really missed that in-person connection. There David Acheria runs MongoDB, a global database company headquartered in New York, with offices in 14 cities around the world. They were pushing us to say, when can we start opening up the offices, because they were anxious to meet. When this office did start to reopen in October, many employees decided not to return. We've been surprised at how, how few employees took us up on the offer. By summer, Itacheria wants the whole team back. Do you think people will want to come back to work in July? If things are back to normal, we do expect people to be available for in-person meetings because we think that's an important part of our culture and how we do business. Everyone gets either a window or an aisle. That's correct. But for now, the office has socially distanced seating, disinfecting products. These wipes are a hot item. So you could probably get 10, 15 bucks for one of these on the black market. <laughs> and of course, a strict mask protocol. If you have to walk around, you have to wear a mask. If you go to the restroom, you have to wear a mask. I opted to come in and see some familiar faces. <laughs> Ava Thompson is David Echeria's assistant. Was it more about getting to come here and see people, or was it more about getting out of your house? Uh, <laughs> um, it was a little of both, a little from column A and column B. Um, it was nice to like put on an outfit and put some makeup on. Echeria says working from home doesn't suit everyone. The people who struggle from working from home are, uh, I would say, young employees who want more social interaction and may not have ample private space to do their work young parents who have young children at home. And he thinks that America's empty offices will fill up again. Certain companies have said, maybe we don't need an office. Maybe people don't need to come back to work. Are they going to regret it? I believe that they will. There's nothing like meeting someone face to face. Professor Jeffrey Polzer, the behavior specialist, thinks things might never go back to the way they were. Is it possible that offices could be worth the huge cost? It's pure tradition. It's like that's the way we've always done it. It's not that hard to, to start to think of that as an artifact of a time when we didn't have all of the, the tools that we now have to communicate and collaborate with each other. But Professor Rafael Sadun, the economist, says offices aren't just about efficiency. Look, I don't know, I don't know you. I can tell you, I miss my co-workers. I miss meeting Jeff at the coffee machine. I think it's very natural to, to have some aspect of our working life mixed with our social life. This portion of Sunday Morning is sponsored by Blue Diamond Almond Milk.